Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a health bar in your game uh, with a bit of styling attached to it as well, at least from one programmer to another. In this tutorial, or lecture if you want to call it that, it's probably more appropriate, it is assumed that you know at least the basics of how the editor works and how to navigate it, how to basically make objects and how to just do the most basic of things. If you don't, then this might be a little bit hard to follow along to, as some of the things that I do are assumed that you know how to do yourself or might go a little too fast for you to actually know what the fuck I'm doing. So here goes. This is the third person template um, using blueprints. It does not matter whether you use C++ or blueprint, it will work either way. Um, I just thought it would be nice to do it here as most RPGs tend to have a health bar in their heads up display. Okay, so how do we start? Well, at first we are going to go into our blueprints and we will make a new user interface blueprint called a widget blueprint. And this widget blueprint we will call HUD. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but that's just what I call it since that's short for heads up display. And the very first thing we do in this HUD is that we go up to the fill screen drop down up here press the custom button and set the width to 920 by 1080 the width to 920 and the height to 1080 the reason we do that is so that the engine gets to automatically scale this um, widget for whatever ratio follows the 16 by 9 ratio uh, completely automatically as you can see down here in the UI scale it goes here and completely scales it automatically which is which is super awesome Right, so what is it that we actually want to achieve? What we want to achieve is to have a health bar up here on the left, maybe followed by other bars. Uh, but of course, we will just make a health bar, as everybody knows what that is. Um, and it'll come up here on the left, and then after we have placed it, we will try and style it a little bit, make it a little bit cooler to look at. And again, I am a programmer by heart and by trade, so what I am going to do is programmer art, but some programmers might even call it actual art. I don't know that, but yeah, you've been warned. So first, we need some sort of container for our uh, health bar. We're going to use a vertical box so that we can place multiple um, bars on top of each other. And um, this is what you would normally do. You would take the vertical box, then you will put more elements inside the vertical box. However, we want to style this vertical box and make it look pretty. So what we want to do first the, is to put an overlay in here and then make the vertical box a child of that overlay. So let's call this overlay the uh, bar overlay and then call the vertical box for the bar vertical box so that we know what we're working with here. And inside the bar overlay, we're going to put an image. And this image is going to act as our background for pretty much everything else that is inside this overlay. You'll see how that works out. So first, just make sure that it uses all of horizontal and vertical space. Go into the brush and make sure that its uh, color and opacity is set to zero in the alpha channel so that it doesn't obstruct anything while we're working. So that's nice. Let's call that the bar background image. So you might have noticed that in my naming conventions, I use what the actual um, like palette component is called along with the name so that I know what it is. That also just makes it easier to work with in general. Let's just remove this. We don't need this to be a variable. Right, so inside our bar vertical box, we are going to make our actual like bar elements. And to do that, we're going to make a horizontal box. And in this horizontal box, we will call it, uh, we will have our actual elements for the health bar. So let's call it the HP horizontal box. Okay, and inside of this box, we're going to have three things. We're gonna have a text element, then a progress bar, and lastly, we're gonna have another text element. All right, and the first one is called the name one. So let's call it HP name text. And then we will call this the HP progress bar, where we will have our actual health value or health expressed as a bar show up. And then we will do, the last one will be like a value that shows 
what your actual health is so that you don't, can't, don't have to try and read it off of a bar. Let's call that the HP value text. All right, so good so far. So what is next? Well, this all looks very squished together. It doesn't even look like anything right now, but that's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, something else that we're gonna need to make this health bar really snazzy looking is we're going to use a border. And a border is simply just a container where you can put one child in. And we're going to have the progress bar be the child of that border. Perfect. And this border we will call HP border. Very simple. So now we have a pretty nice hierarchy of the overlay, the background image, the vertical box with all of our bars inside. And the first box bar we're going to make is the uh, HP bar, the hit points bar, which has a name uh, value or a name text, uh, an actual border, uh, the progress bar inside of that border, and then, of course, the value text. All right, so good so far. Now we need to actually start, you know, twisting or changing values around so this actually looks like anything at all, because currently it doesn't look like anything. So first, what we want to be make sure is that this anchors to the upper left corner, because that's where we want our health bar to be. And now we move this anger a little bit, I think. Oh, you know what? No, we won't move the anger, actually. We will, however, move this anger over here. And remember to hold down control when you do this so that the uh, um, container expands with it. So let's make this... 35% of the width of the screen at any given time. That's why angers are nice. It's a relative uh, It's a relative value compared to having a static value and the angel will automatically scale this for us and make sure that this only uses 35% of the total width of the screen at any given time, which is super nice And we also want to make sure that it also has a bit of height so that we can have multiple uh, bars in here so as a first, let's just give it seven and a half and make sure it still follows 35. This is a little bit tricky. There we go. So now this is the space that it's going to take up, which is super cool. Now, something that you will notice a lot in games is that these like UI parts don't like sort of, they're, they're not glued to the edges of the screen. They are a little bit, they have a little bit of an offset. Uh, to just sort of make it nicer to look at. So we're going to do that. So we take this anger over here, remember to hold down control. Then we're going to move it a little bit out from the wall here. Try and see if we can make it. It's a little bit hard to read these values now because the anger is in the way, but try and see if you can make it just about 2%. Make sure you keep your... It doesn't actually matter what you do with the rest of the values right now. And then we pull up on this one and we pull this down as you can see, the new value over there, just about 2% as well. Right, just like that. Or, I don't know what. I want to make it, try and make it look somewhat even. There, that looks about 2%-ish on every side, yeah. Then we're going to make sure we still use all the space we wanted to use. That I'm just going by eye right now, just so you know. And let's see. Yeah. Actually, no, just a little bit further down. There. And then this one is going to be down to the seven and a half we had before. Come on. As I said, this is a little bit tricky. There. Okay, so now we have a nice offset that looks pretty much even on the left and the upper side so that these bars are not like completely glued to the edges of the screen. That's very nice. Okay, so this looks like a mess. It doesn't look like anything, really. Uh, so what we do first is that we take this vertical box and tell it that it should use all of the available space that it has, both in the vertical direction and or in the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. We don't really have to do the horizontal direction. It's just nice to have it um, like unified in sizes. So, um, oh well, no, sorry. The actual vertical box here needs to take up all space. That's fine. It's the horizontal box that doesn't necessarily need to, but it does anyway. Um, so 
we need to uh, distribute how much space these three elements can take up each. Uh, and um, let's just say that the border will take up the most space. So this needs to add up to a, an entire like one number. So let's just give this 0 0.8 and then we will give this text block a 0 0.1 and the other text block a 0 0.1. So that adds up to a total of one. Uh, for that entire horizontal box. That's great. Now, this text here, as I said before, is the name value of what this bar is for. And it's for hit points, so let's give it HP for short. Everybody knows what that means. And then we also want to justify it in the middle so that it looks nicer. And then the text over here is going to be what the actual value of your health is right now. So let's just put that at zero at first. That's fine. We will also put that in the middle, just like that. Now, this is what you would probably like typically use for a prototype. You would have this as your uh, hit point bar, and then you will have a lot of other bars underneath that if you needed to, to uh, show all the other values that you need to show. However, we want to go beyond that. We want to make it nicer. We want to make it even cooler to look at. And um, one of the ways to do that is to use the shearing, a shear function, or the shear scaling that you can use. And what does shear do, you might ask? Well, shear makes it so that uh, things are either shifted to left or right or they're shifted up or down. We just want to shift it to the right so and you'll see what that does. So pick the three elements HP name text, HP border, HP value text and then go into transform over in the render transform and here you have the shear transform right. Go to the X value and here you will see that if I give it a value of 5 it will try and shift it to the left for 5 pixels However, if I put it in the other direction, minus 25, for example, this is what you get. Something that leans to the right instead, which looks very nice. It looks pretty nice. So that's what we're going to go with. Very cool. Now it looks even nicer, and it's a very, very small adjustment, mind you. Uh, and since the HP or the progress bar is a child of the HP border, it follows it along, which is very, very cool. Okay. Now we have a problem because this text seems nice right now but I don't know how much health you're gonna have in your game you could have a lot of health in this game we will just assume that the highest amount of health you can have is 99,999 clearly that does not fit in my box so what do I do to solve that well I would probably just take the easy way out which is to solve to simply make the font smaller so let's try and make it smaller. 20, eh, not quite right. 16 maybe. Yeah, that looks right. You can read it and it fits inside the entire box. That's fine. Now you also notice that the actual like bar shrink down with the text, which is fine. I mean, you could make it bigger. You could say that this, for example, could be bigger. You could make this 20 so that it's easier to read. Um, and then this text is just smaller. I mean, that's fine. You could, you just need to justify it, the text so that it, it lines up right like this, so that it lines up in the middle. That looks a lot nicer. So, you know what, let's do this. Let's do this, that, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, sure, let's do that. Uh, so what's next? Now that we have this set up here, let's start by putting this text back to zero. Uh, where do we go from here? Because we have, almost reached what we can do within this like very like pretty powerful toolkit actually but we can go to the uh, bar background image like before remember we said it's uh, alpha channel to zero now set it back to one and go up to the value of the color and set it to black now it has a background that's very nice but we want it to be sort of transparent so that it only highlights the bars but don't overshadow what's behind them so let's give it an alpha value of like 0 0.3. So it gets a sort of a nice back background. Maybe you can make it a little darker. 0 0.35, that looks nice. Um, this way, you now have a highlighted sort of health bar instead of just having a very health, like sort of lonely health bar hanging up here. All right. So next up, we want to make this look even cooler, and we can. This will take a little bit of artistic uh, interven intervention, if you want to call it that. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to open up 
paint.net. You can use your preferred tool of um, image magi magical magicalness. And uh, I just choose paint.net because it's a very simple program and it does pretty much what I want when I'm making programmer art. It's sort of like paint, but on steroids, like paint and Photoshop had a child they don't talk about. So let's make a new document and let's give it a power of two size, 128 by 128. And delete everything inside the square and then make a new square that outlines it instead. Let's give it a thickness of five. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, let's zoom in a bit here. Make sure we make it even on all sides. Okay, yep. And there, and there. And then let's make sure that it is white all around. We want a white border for our health bar. You can make it any color you want. So what's important to notice here is that in the middle of all these bars that you see here, uh, you have a square which is completely empty of anything. It's just a transparent square. That's very important because that's where our health bar is going to be inside, but the white part is going to be around our health bar. And simply title it border. There we go. And save it. Yes. Right. Now we're done with paint. Paint.net. And we're back in our good old editor. Now, to you know, have good habits of keeping things practical when you're working with this, let's make a folder for our new border and call it textures because that's what the Unreal Engine would see as that. It would see this border that we just made as a texture. Now, go into the folder we just made and take the border. And there it is. And it looks nice. It looks exactly as we want it to look. That's very nice. Now, in your hut, go to the border. And in the border, you see that it has a brush. Now, this is very useful to us because this brush can be changed. And the brush we want to change it to. Oh, that's not right. No, come on. It is doing something it should not. Okay. Choose the border. All right. And you will see straight away that it, it is a square up here. And we don't want to draw it as an image. We want to draw it as a box. Just like that. Now, drawing it as a box makes it so that it follows, it tiles it out and tries to make it into like an edge picture, like a tiled picture. If you've worked with Unity, you know that that's basically what a tiled picture is. It's what this is right here, basically. Now, this didn't really change much when you look at this whole thing, but that's because we haven't styled anything else yet. So I'll go into the progress bar. And first of all, this is not what health looked like. Health is obviously green. so. Let's change it down here and say we don't want any of the blue, we don't want any of the red. Yeah, there we go. That's what a health bar looks like in terms of color. Let's give it, yep, that looks nice. And uh, let's see, we go into styling, we go to the background image, and then we go to the tint. And this alpha channel is set to zero. Bam, there we go. Now, the bar doesn't have any background, but that's fine because we provided it with a background through our overlay over here. So now you will notice that the bar's colors are overlapping with the borders that we just put in. And the borders are kind of ugly on either side. And we're going to fix that. So in the progress bar, go up to the padding section. And in here, we're going to change the padding in such a way that it stays within our borders, but doesn't overlap with them. So let's try and pad it from the left at first. Let's try with five pixels. Not quite enough, I think. Let's try with seven. It might be enough, actually. Seven and a half, maybe. And let's try with eight. Uh, maybe ten. Yeah. We can almost go, go in and change it later. And then from the top, we'll add another. Let's try ten, maybe. Oh, that's way too much. Okay. Let's try five. That's closer. Uh, two and a half, maybe. Yeah, that's right up against the edge. Okay. Now we need to do this on the other side too. So we have padding here and padding here. Right. So now we need to actually fix the border so it looks nicer. So go into the border. There it is. And in the border, we have to change its margin. And Let's see if we can change it to look very like a lot nicer. 
we start from the left. Um, let's see if we add a f oh, not five, that's a little much. Let's try and pull it. This value goes from zero to one. So keep that in mind. As you can see, we want it to be pretty much crispy at the sides there. So let's see. So about 0 0.1, that's nice, yeah, that works. And then at the top, we want it to be about 0 0.2, I think. Yeah, that's a little thick. Let's try 0 0.15, maybe 0 0.1. And then apply it, of course, everywhere else so that it gets nice and even. Okay, so we still have some artifacts here and there, but that's okay, that's okay. We can work with this. Let's see if we just add a little more. Okay, so 0 0.25 looks nice on both sides there. That's very cool. And then on the right and left, we have two very nice borders. So now we go back to the bar here and just adjust it a little bit so that it fits um, inside of the, the border that we just adjusted there. And we do that through the padding, of course. Let's see, seven point, or no, zero maybe, or seven. Yeah, seven, that it fits within seven. Okay, so we set the other one to seven as well. And there you go. Now you have a health bar that fits inside of a custom border, which is very nice. That's, you know, what we set out to do. Okay, very cool. So now that you have this set up, what do you do with it? Well, you have to bind two things. You have to bind this health bar uh, or progress bar, and you have to bind this health value so that those are useful to you. Now, how do you do that? First, you click the health bar or the progress bar, sorry, and then you go down to the percentage here, and then you bind it. You create a new binding for it so that it knows where to draw the value to set in the actual progress bar. It gives you a very standard sort of uh, function, it generates a function for you. We're gonna rename it a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. So get HP percent hits, let's just call it that. So the bar, the progress bar works by uh, jumping between value zero and one. That's sort of like from zero percent to a hundred percent. That's how that works. So in order to make this work for us, we have to feed this field with a value that goes between zero and one. And we can do that very easily, actually. If we go into our third person character here, you can do this in your C++ class as well, as long as you make the field available through blueprints, that's all that matters. You make a new variable and you call it health. Make sure that it's an integer. And then you make another variable and you call it max health. And that's also an integer. And you compile those and you give them some value. So let's say the max health is a thousand and the actual health right now is also a thousand. So you have full health. Now we go back into our HUD. We go to our event graph because we need to have a player reference for this to work. So we say uh, get player character. Again, you can do this in any way you want as long as you get the right player. And then we say we need to cast this to the player character, the default player character that we are using right now. And for us, that's the third person character. So we put that in. And then we promote this to a variable so that we can reference it from anywhere in the widget blueprint. And we will call it player ref as player reference. Okay. So back in our function here, we call our player reference. Oh, let's just pull it in here. Get. And from this player reference, we get the health. Get health. Yep. And then we say get max health. Yeah. And now if you remember any of your like basic math teaching from school, you will understand what's about to happen. So you cast this to a float as this up here expects a float. You do this for the other value too, like this. And then you simply say that this divided by this needs to go in here. Now the health bar will get will be provided with the right value at all times so that it will be set correctly. Now you do something similar for the health value, this one up here. You bind that to 
a function and we will call it get HP value. And you basically do pretty much the same thing. You pull in the player reference, you say get health, and then you cast it to text like this. It does that automatically for you. And there you go, you're done. Now you have a health bar, which, oh, I forgot to actually add the health bar, Never mind. Let's go into the level group and then do it this way since this is a test level. So when the play begins, when the game begins, we say get player controller, I believe it is. And then we say create widget. And then we pick our widget we just made, which is called HUD. And whatever comes out of this, we want to add to the viewport. Again, be aware of which player you assign this to if you're making multiplayer games. And now when we start the game, you will see our health bar up here. It's just very nice. So now we have a functioning health bar, which can be controlled by our player's health. And it is reflected in the actual progress bar to the left of the health value. Now this is very nice. However, we wanna go a little bit you know, beyond that. So go into your project settings and go into the input section. And in the input section, you make two action mappings. Uh, one of them, let's just get rid of this. We don't need that. One of them is called test health up and we will bind that to numpad eight as that's not a very normally used key then we make an, another action mapping and we will call it test health down and we will bind that to numpad two to make it go downwards now with these two uh, made we go into our level blueprint again and this time we say health up to make the player's health go up and health down to make the player's health go down. And this is just a test. Like this is just to test out that our health bar really works. So let's say that um, uh, for this to work, we have to make a player player uh, reference just like we did in our widget blueprint. So player character. And uh, we say we cast it to our standard or default uh, player character as we did before it's still it's important we do that because otherwise we won't actually have health uh, to uh, to access and then we say uh, we right click on this and we say promote variable there we go now we have a player reference that we can reference anywhere in this blueprint which is very nice so let's call this player ref as we did in our widget blueprint very nice and now we can pull information from this player blueprint or this player reference. So we want to get health and we want to get max health. There we go. And then we want to add some level or some amount of health to this to test it. So let's just say 100. And then we want to say if this is bigger, if this equation is bigger than the max health that you can possibly have, then we don't wanna do anything about it. We don't wanna add more health because then you go over limit and then things start to get a little bit weird and we don't want that. So if this is true, do nothing. However, if it's false, then just go ahead and add the health. So set health, just like that. And then we take it from the equation we just made. There we go. That's the first test button. Now, the other test button is pretty much the same, just, I mean, just going the other way. So if, okay, so instead of saying plus, we're saying minus 100, because we're working in tens right now. We don't need the max health for this equation. We just need to test if whatever, um, whatever comes out of this, if it's uh, less than or equal to zero, then do nothing because then we are dead. Uh, otherwise, uh, go ahead and do the equation. There we go. Should be fairly easy to follow. 
So now we have something we can use here, right? So let's go into our test and see if it works. And I'm pressing the up and down and look at that. I can't go below 100 health because that would technically kill me. So, but I can go up, but I can't go higher than a thousand because that means I have more health than I actually have. And that doesn't make any sense. So now we can test that this bar works exactly as intended, which is very nice. Now, as the crowning jewel on this, we're gonna make a little animation for our, um, our health bar. And the way that this works is that when the health bar or when the health goes below a certain percentage of max health, then we want the, the border around this bar to, to flash. That's why you added a border in the first place because otherwise you, it, you wouldn't really be able to do what I'm about to show you. Um, so first we go down here on the left, we make a new animation and we call it the HP low health animation. And we click it, then we click on our border and we say that the first keyframe of our animation is gonna be a brush color white. That's fine. Then we advance half a second into the future and say that over half a second, it needs to transition to red. Make a new keyframe. There we go. You get the gradient bar down here showing that you did it right. And then you click away from the animation, make sure it's not selected anymore. Go into the border. There we go. And set the brush color back to white just to make sure. Okay. Now we need to play this animation at the right time. How do we do that? In our event graph, we have to bind two events. One of the events is when your player's health is below a certain threshold. And the other event is when the player is above that threshold again so that it can stop flashing. So what we do is first of all, we make a new variable. We call it is a low HP animation playing. And then we add it into a category that we call animation boolean because I imagine you could have a lot of these. So just for um, just to keep things in order, that's what we do. And uh, then we have to go into our HP percentage, and in here we have to expand things a little bit. We have to make things. We have to do some extra work to make this work as we wanted to. First, we make an event dispatcher. Uh, which is basically a delegate. It's it's an extra job that you make the engine do on the side um, to help you out, basically, to delegate jobs outwards, which is very nice. So this event dispatcher is going to be called low health, and then we make another one that's called um, what should we call this one? This one we should call it. Uh, add uh, quit. There we go, adequate health. So what we want this to do is we want this event to be called. And we also want this one to be called. But we need a condition for when we need to call these. So we say if this value is less than 0 0.2, which means if your health is less than 20%, let's make a branch here, tie it up with this. Um, let's move this a little bit away here. There we go. If this is true, if the, if your health is below 20%, then we want to call this event called call low health, because then we trigger that your health is low and something needs to happen. If it's not, then, then we just say you have adequate health, which is fine. That's of course the ideal scenario. That's what we want all the time to have adequate health. Otherwise we die. So, Let's make some reroutes here to make it look a little nicer. There we go. And then we bind these here so that, you know, if either event happens, then it still continues on. Let's move this over. There we go. Okay, cool. Right, so now we need to catch these two events. Someone needs to listen for these two events. Otherwise, they won't do anything. In here, we're going to bind some events to these. So bind to the low health call and bind to the adequate health call like that. 
So we will make two new custom events. Low, oh, low health event. And make another one and we call it adequate health event. Okay. Then we bind this to this one and this one down here to this one, which means that when we call, when these are called, when one of these are called, um, one of these will trigger, which is a very powerful thing to do in blueprints, something you should get very familiar with because it is, it is a super useful function to, to know how to do proper. Okay, so a low health event happened, what do we do? Well, obviously we first wanna check is our animation already playing? If it is, we don't need to re-trigger it. If it is, we do nothing. However, if it isn't, we say that, yes, it is playing. Okay. And then we say, start the animation, basically. Start this animation here. So, start, um, let's see. Oh no, play animation, yes. So we say play this animation. We set the loop to zero so that it loops forever. We set it to ping pong so that it goes back and forth between white and red so that it's like flashing just as we want. And that's it for low health event. Now for adequate health event, that one's a little bit more tricky. So at first we check, um, is the animation already playing? Now, if it is playing, if this is true, if, if we know that this is flashing already, then we want it to stop. So at first, we set this value here to false. So as in, it is no longer playing. And then we say it should play the animation again, and it should do it, do it once. The animation it needs to play is, of course, the animation that we have here. And um, it should reverse it so at whatever point in time it currently is at it should reverse to zero so that it stops and becomes completely white again um and let's see here how do we do that it needs some start time so whatever point in time uh get let's see time get animation current time there we go so Whatever point in time the animation is currently at is where we want it to start reversing back to zero so that it becomes white again. And then it will end. It will stop because the number of loops is one so that it will stop as soon as it reaches playtime zero. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now let's try and test it out. Test this out and see if it works. We have our lovely dude here. Let's go down in health. We are halfway and, oh, we're below 20%. And it's flashing red and white. And we go back, oh, look, it stops. Pretty much right away. There we go. So now when you get your health back, this will stop flashing as to say that you are no longer below critical health. All right. So we have, you know, reached what we set out to do. If you wanted to make more bars, you can easily do this now because now you have sort of a template. So you take this horizontal bar here, put it, uh, uh, copy it and paste it. And there you go, you have another bar and you could make this whatever you want. So let's just say that this bar is the XP horizontal box. And this is the XP name text and this is the xp border and this is the xp value text and this is the xp progress bar and then i could go here and say well this should now be xp and this as we all know xp is not green it's like yellow and there you go Hit play oh and there you go you now have an xp bar as well and you could pretty much keep stacking the bars as you want. You just need to expand this box so that it has room for more. And you can see you can easily do that by pretty much just pulling these. One of these, just pull it down and you will have room for even more. So 
I hope that this was useful to you. I hope you learned a little bit about how powerful the Unreal Motion Graphics module really is and what you can do without, you know, having animators and artists and things like that. So you can get your prototype out, which looks pretty presentable. It's just a matter of being creative enough to understand how to do this right. So yeah, I hope you learned anything. If you have any questions, any feedback, just leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, you know, like, favorite, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Dislike if you didn't like it, you know, the whole drill. See you later.